Once Jesus and the military guard assigned to him reached Golgotha, he was quickly thrust to the ground on his back, with the patibulum placed under his shoulders and outstretched arms. The next event was to nail his hands to the crossbar. The kind of nails used to impale Christ to the cross are known, through archaeological digs, to actually be spikes measuring approximately 5 to 7 inches in length, and 3 eighths inch in their greatest width at the square base. Similar to railroad spikes, they are wide at the top and taper throughout their length. During the nailing on the cross, one thing that is certain is that the median nerve was severely traumatized by the nailing. The median nerve serves two important functions. One is sensory, meaning that it allows sensations such as touch. The nail had traversed the median nerve and very likely would radiate the pain toward the fingernails as well as the upper forearm. It is not unusual for this shooting pain to be accompanied by increased sweating, local tissue swelling, and muscle spasms. The skin may also demonstrate changes in temperature and color. This pain is usually continuous and may be triggered by emotional stress, local movement of the affected area, and even touch. It is not surprising, then, that individuals experiencing causalgia do everything in their power to keep the injured site as immobile as possible. Obviously this was not an option for Jesus, since his impaled hands would be constantly jarring as he hung on the cross. There would have been uh, either destruction of the nerve or, or impingement of the nerve that would have created a tremendous amount of pain so that every time you try to take a breath, you'd be, it'd be agonizing. You'd be pushing down on spiked feet, which of course hurt, and then you'd be hanging on spiked arms. And so you alternate from excruciating pain to excruciating pain every time I take a breath. One cannot begin to imagine the awful pain that he must have experienced. Jesus has endured hours of misery, but the worst of the ordeal is yet to come. The nails that are used, uh, we have many of them uh, excavated here and there. They're usually quite long. Uh, they have a very large uh, head. The shank is square in cross-section. They're forged. They're quite pointed because they're to be driven into very large timbers, that is, through the person and into the wood. In quick succession, the nails are pounded into his feet and hands. There are many uh, cases in which, for example, an, an injury to the hand uh, from a bullet or from a, even a, a, a knife would cause what is called causalgia and initially the pain is felt just where the injury is. If the median nerve is ruptured or injured, it will also cause severe excruciating burning like pain like lightning bolts traversing the arm into the spinal cord. Now we know from experiences in during war, especially World War II, where did studies on a condition called causalgia, which is a condition caused by injuring the median nerve. The pain was so terrific that even morphine wouldn't help, and they had to actually operate on the spinal column in order to decrease uh, that pain or to eliminate uh, that type of pain. And it's so severe that if you blow on the skin of the hand where the pain is, the patient would scream abnormally. The pain would be like hot liquid. It would be a hot shooting pain back up the arm. It would leave the hand in a claw shape and paralyzed. When the median nerve is transected, it gives about the sensation of having an electrical kettle prod stuck to your wrist and a constant electrical shock going through your hand. And it causes the fingers to claw. In essence, the Romans devised a way they could drive a spike through a man's hand and not lose one drop of blood, while maximizing the amount of pain and suffering that a man could endure. Once the nails had been placed in Jesus' hands, the patibulum and his attached body would be hoisted upward by the soldiers attending to him to anchor it to the top of the stipes. The stipes was the vertical portion of the cross that was usually anchored in the ground, thereby making it easier to use for repeated crucifixions, rather than having to dig a new hole and secure it in place each time. Again, the pain that Jesus must have experienced during the attachment of these two pieces of the cross would have been unbearable. 